Okay, so I'm looking at an issue on the forums. Uh, let's pop it there. So yeah, I'm looking at an issue on the forums where it's duplicated entities even though old uh, scene is destroyed. And this is, looks like an issue to do with um, either the old hierarchy not being deleted when you change scenes, or maybe the scene's been loaded, loaded multiple times it's a little difficult to see what it is from the errors, but first of all, we're going to, let's try to reduce this. Um, so first of all, I fought the project uh, and let's see if we can reproduce the issue that they're going through. So we start on the home page and let's go with that. We don't need that. So let's just go through this. Uh, click play. That's not working. Okay, so play doesn't work. Uh, let's see if we can jump through to level one first. Turn on to level two, that's fine. Straight through the middle. So I can't see the issue they're running into, which is a bit frustrating. Um, but let's see what we can do. Yeah, so that looks all good. So it's interesting they're running into this issue. Um, but I've noticed there are a few things in the project uh, that could be updated or fixed or made a little bit more robust. So uh, let's have a look at the source code. Uh, da, da. Let's change. Let's change the theme here. Go for plain canvas classic. Okay, there we go. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Buh, buh, buh. Movement. Next scene. So next scene. We have a scene name has a global. Okay, that's not good. So by putting a variable here in global scope means that there's only one variable. Uh, one variable for all the different scripts instances in this case it only just works because um, there's only one instance of this script in a scene at one time so this works mostly by accident but let's fix that up so let's rather than make it global let's make this uh, local to the script instance and update all the other instances as well uh, let's see if there's any more let's see if there are any more of the instances of this word so just here, cool. Uh, so it has collided, uh, collided, collided, true. Uh, ooh. Okay, uh, this wasn't here before, but uh, I think I was in the middle of code before I forked this. So let's, what I was gonna do was to make sure that multiple collisions don't occur. So the, the, the bit I'm a bit hesitant about is that every time there's a collision, it's gonna call uh, change scenes. So if there's ever a case where there's more than one collision, maybe it, there's two collision events in the same frame, but that could happen. Or there may be a uh, because the scene because the scene files take some time to load. There may uh, sorry, several frames to load. There may be more collisions in that time between the first collision and the scene loading, and it may cause and between those frames there may be other collision events which will also call um, scene load. So what we're going to do is ensure that the this callback is only fired once ever per scene um, we can do that quite easily um, we don't need we could do two ways use a flag that we got here has collided and then ch check it before we change scenes but what we could do instead is remove all that let's move the comments we don't need that either uh, da, 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 get rid of that. what we can do instead rather than saying every time there's a collision event we say we could say on the very first collision event that we get so collision once, collision start, call this event. Then after this, uh, after there's a collision, it will no long this uh, callback will no longer be fired, even if there's another event. It only listens to this event once. So da -da. Uh, I think this is wrong. I think that should actually check in if uh, the player object is hitting it. Uh, where's the player object? Uh, no tag. Clipper. Okay, so what we can do here is. Add a tag, and then we can go. Uh, what's the next scene? Next scene is on the trigger, I think. Yes, yeah, on the trigger. So on the trigger at the end. So when the box hits uh, hits hits a trigger, I say trigger. It's not really a trigger. It's a static box, uh, but it's acting like a trigger in this particular sense. So that means we want to do dot other. 
what's the documentation? Um, let me jump to the documentation. Give me a second. Uh, we're going to see uh, API reference and we want, oh, what's the callback? Collision callback, collision component, da da da, 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 da trigger event, trigger start, contact result, that's what you want. Okay, so it's other, other is the entity. Okay, cool. So dot other dot, I think it has tags. Is it has tags? And see, scroll down to tags, uh, tags. Tags, so dot could be entity dot tags dot has, and a string. Okay, so other dot tags dot has dot uh, has player. So if it's a player object, then we can change scenes. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So if we done it this way, and something else hits the tr hits the trigger. We're not going to get another collision event, so maybe this should actually maybe we should go back to what it was before, where we had to flag. So this, uh, let's call it loading scenes. Uh, is loading scene equals false? Oops, false. And then we could do it here if we are not loading scenes. Then change scenes, and then this dot is loading scene equals true. And I think between all of that, and let me just format it, save it. So between all that, that should be robust enough to work. Ooh, what happened there? Has collided true. Ah, interesting. Why is that? So this is referencing a global? Why is it referencing a global? Oh, I see what it's done. Oh, that's not great. So the time I was relying on that global we just changed uh, to know whether we've changed scene or not. So what we're going to do instead is, uh, so rather than this, rather than relying on global, which is bad uh, form, we're going to fire an a, a app event, a event on the app object to say that Oh, wait, hang on a second. Why is this doing? Why is it doing clear intervals? Actually, you know what? We don't even need to do that. This is probably not the way I would do this. So, is there a time object on each level? Let's just take a look. Timer. Right click. Uh, references. We've got text. Okay, so there's a bit of UI. That's text. So, what we can do here, uh, actually, what we can do here is rather than relying on clear interval, which is outside the scope of uh, the game. This is runs on the window, on the like the browser window. Um, we're just going to do something. Ah, oh, there's more globals here. That's not great. Okay, so what we're going to do here is simply is it a countdown time or time count up? Minutes, second. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. What we're going to do is use use delta time. Keep track of delta time to count up, and delta time is. The num is the number of seconds between frames, so you can use that to keep track of seconds. So let's change this a little bit. So we've got time equals zero. That's fine. This dot minutes. Let's make this all again. Make it all scoped to the script object. Uh, da -da, this time I'm not sure what that time. So time is useful. We don't not going to use that anymore. That's fine. Time it. We don't not going to use any of that anymore. Oh, we might use this. Okay. Uh, let me actually let me keep that code there because I'm going to copy and paste a bit of it. So every frame, we are going to update the text. Um, first of all, we're going to update the timer. This dot timer uh, plus equals delta t. So we're going to keep adding to this, and this will keep track of seconds. Um, and what we want to do is. First of all, round, shall we round it up or round it down? First of all, let's go uh, var rounded time equals uh, this dot timer. And we've used uh, math.round, I think. Is it math.round? Or is it big M? 
There we go, that's uh, round. Actually, I'm going to use floor, so, always, so it's always floored, so it only ticks over on the second. So if we floor it, that will give us a round, it's a round number. Uh, we are going to modulus by six, so we're going to divide by six, we get number of minutes. So um, five minutes equals round the timer, round time, actually, I say round time, it should be rounded. Run the timer divided by 60 because and then we round and we do floor that again so it gives the number of minutes that have passed and then number of seconds would that left over would be equal to again math.floor round the timer and we're going to modulate it by 60 so we get the remainder of six uh, when we divide it by 60. Fantastic. And then minutes and seconds, that's fine. Update time, that's fine too. Time scale, and then this way, if we pause the game, uh, which would usually be done through the app time scale, this won't tick up either. So this is now the, this the timer, the time that's passed is now deterministic by the gate the map the time by the time that has passed in the game itself in the engine rather than through this window. Because if you if we kept using set interval. Then what would happen is if the timer was if the time scale was set to zero, the interval will still take over because it's outside the scope, it's outside the engine functionality. It's a completely separate bit of logic. Okay, that's timer. Save and save and save in. All right, let's run that and see how far we get. Minutes not defined. Let's go back to this. Why is minutes not defined? Oh wait, what do you mean? Oh right. Okay, in that case. That would be uh, zero, zero. Mm. You know what? Let's let's do this properly. Uh, let's make a little function because we're uh, we're repeating the same logic twice. Let's just do this properly by going timer dot prototype dot uh, update time update text equals oops, equals function. And that will just do all this. Oops. And then that way we can go this dot update text copy and paste. Okay. To launch window. Okay, now it's uh, one second, two seconds. There we go. And that's back to zero on the next time. That's interesting. They just hit the thing and not hit the collision. Why did that happen? Why is that happening? Just going to start, that's fine. Huh. Oh, I know what I've done wrong. It's because in this scene, the player had not been uh, given an extra tag. So let's go through. Let's go through all the scenes. Um, so these should have the player tag. Re technically, this should be a template, and the temp same template should be used on each of the scenes. But let's deal with this for the moment. So again, not sure why left makes us go right, but never mind. I assume that's what the user wanted. And I 
back to perfect. Right. Okay, so that's that so far. Right, let's make a checkpoint for this. Uh, fix, or oh, so, made scene loading more robust and updated time. Cool, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so the next thing that had bugged me was uh, what the bug we saw earlier on the home page where this. This, uh, this didn't work and I have no idea why so let's go look at this um, did this ever work with any scripts in this there's a script here for, oh there's a script on button play button what does play button do it does nothing okay no worries let's fix that so this dot we're gonna make this so we're gonna listen to the callback for the click and then load the scene um, uh, dot entity button dot uh, on click Ooh. and this one a bit, a bit loath to copy and paste but um, for the sake of speed we are going to copy this it's effectively going to be the same script I mean ideally what we do here is remove a bunch of this logic into a separate function and call that at both cases but for the sake of speed we should completely do this now uh, so play button do -do -do. Uh, and we're just going to load the scene here let's just do this quickly um, Okay, and instead, and then get the old hierarchy. Hierarchy dot destroy. Okay. So we don't need the update function, and we're going to pass this. What scene do we need to load? Is level one. Okay, let's try that now. So yeah, we're going to lose left, right, click play. Scene name not defined. What do you mean scene name not defined? Oh, we're screwed up now. Oh, of course. Sorry. This should be this dot scene name. That's what I get for copy and paste in. Play. And there we go, we're in scene one. Hey, I'm not getting too bad at this. Spin, spin, spin. Oh, no, oh, not at all. And there we go. Okay, so a couple of things that I'm going to leave for the original poster to uh, handle is on the timer, we sh uh, make that a bit nicer. So it goes 05, 06, 07, etc. Just want to make sure the minutes work on this. So we're going to wait a little while. Actually, you know what? Let's speed it up. Um, I've been. Let's go into cheat bit. Let's go PC dot app. So the nice thing is about Play Canvas and browsers that you can actually execute code directly in console. So what we're just going to do is time scale, increase time scale equal to three, four, and that speeds up. And that does wait one minute for it to go over the minute. And there we go, one minute. What's fantastic? Put it back to one and back to normal speed. Perfect. So let's save that and give that back to the user. Um, but what do we do? Uh, added, uh, fixed, added, added, uh, start button functionality. Awesome. Okay. Hopefully that's this. This is going to be the first of its kind. We're basically going to do kind of re uh, recorded o uh, office hours of things like this, where I think that explaining it in a video is more useful than typing it out and just sending a link to the uh, project. Uh, let me know what you think about Open Office is videos like this, and uh, if it gets well received, we'll do more of them. Hopefully, if we get time. 